Today I wanted to talk about one of the questions that I see pop up all the time online, and that's what caused the quantum field? Now this is often brought up by religious apologists who are trying to say that physicists don't know what caused the quantum field, so it must be their favorite flavor of God that caused the quantum field, so therefore there must be a God, and their God in particular. And so that's bothersome, it's not a scientific answer. But we do see the question come up in, in real physics discussions, in, of course, philosophical discussions, and then religious discussions. Well, I prefer to think of it in terms of physics and metaphysics, uh, dealing with it logically and evidence-based. And one of the first things to note is, this is a really bad question. If you're a physicist, and in particular quantum field theorist that I am, like I am, you know that the quantum field exists. It exists theoretically based on Planck's determination that there's a quantum harmonic oscillator, and there's no such thing as empty space. And then we know it was well experimental, and experiments such as the Casimir effect tells us that there are dipoles because there's a van der Waals force that pushes plates together. So the quantum field does work. The quantum field's also polarizable and magnetizable. And I did a video on physics lies, there is no ether. Uh, where I go through about a dozen different proofs of the existence of the quantum field. So the thing is, if someone wanted to claim, whether a philosopher or a religious apologist or a physicist, that there is no ether or there is no quantum field at some point, they have to prove that first. They have to come up with a new theory of quantum field theory where somehow the quantum field doesn't exist. Because under quantum field theory and basic physics, the quantum field does exist. So if you make the assumption, say, in Big Bang theory, that there was space that isn't space and doesn't have a quantum field, well, prove it. And show me the theory, or the hypothesis at least. Because there is a quantum they basically come up with a nonsensical hypothesis to lead into a nonsensical theory. So any real cosmological theory has to begin with the quantum field. So as far as we know, we know the quantum field exists and it's always exists. So when I look at the answers, was it a god that caused it? Was it another medium? Was there a more elementary medium that caused the quantum field? Or is the quantum field or quantum fluctuations just caused by the last round of quantum fluctuations? Which is what I say, that the last quantum fluctuations cause the current ones, indefinitely. So that's what we have. And I support my answer because the quantum field exists, and as far as we know, it always, based on our current understanding of physics, it's always existed. There's no theory for how it could not have, or it could have not existed. So I say it's always existed, so this is a bad question. And what you really need to answer is, or the better question is, what are quantum fluctuations? Well, if you go back to answer B, that there's another medium, that puts you into an infinite loop, because if your answer is always there's another medium that's smaller and finer and more elementary, then there's always another medium that's smaller, finer, and more elementary, and there's another one after that, and after that, and after that. And so an infinite logical loop does not give you a real answer. You have to have at some point a medium that is as elementary as it gets, as small as it gets, 
as fine as it gets that explains everything. And the quantum field can do that. And as a quantum field theorist, I've been studying how the quantum field can account for everything. And like such as in size, that it can go down to the Planck length or smaller. And so you don't need anything smaller because it fills all the voids in between everything else. And no, I don't think the Planck length is a limit. And I'll do another video on that for my reasons why. But anyway, so you can't have an infinite loop, so you have to have some medium. And some physicists will say it's the medium that causes a quantum field is the fine medium. So if you're willing to entertain the idea that, that there's a field that's more fine than the quantum field, I'm willing to entertain that hypothesis just showing the data. Um, but for now I'm dealing with the quantum field because it's the finest field for which we have experimental evidence. And then A of course gives you the worst problems because if it was a god, well what created your god? And what's the physical nature of your god? How did the god get the energy to create the quantum field? How did how did it make the quantum field happen? And so there's a lot of difficult questions. And plus the God question is another infinite loop like the medium question. That you, if your answer is always a God did it, then your God was made by another God, made by another God, infinitely. And if you want to say, okay, well, there's only one God, well, how did that God come into existence? because the God hypothesis is not supported by quantum field theory the way the quantum field is. So there's a lot to be proven in order to support that hypothesis. So it's better just to say, based on our current physics, the quantum field exists, it's always existed, and the quantum field remakes itself continuously over time. So the quantum field creates future quantum fields. And so that's my answer. But now if we go back to the question of what are quantum fluctuations, as I said, we know from the Casimir effect that they behave like dipoles, electric charge dipoles. And we also know because space is polarizable and magnetizable that it, space behaves like it's filled with dipoles. The dipoles that, be, that can be polarized can form electric fields, and if they rotate, Di rotating dipoles form magnets, and magnets can be magnetized along magnetic field lines. So all of our electromagnetic theory can be reproduced if space is a medium filled with quantum fluctuations that are polarizable dipoles. And that also means that they have to be polarized with respect to matter and antimatter because they have to come from nothing and return to nothing. So the model that's commonly accepted in physics is the particle pair model, where we have direct fermion type particles like the electron-positron pair that can appear from nothing and annihilate returning to nothing because they're polarized with respect to electric charge and matter in any matter. Now that re also requires two different dipoles. One, it has negative charge of matter and positive charge of antimatter, and another dipole that's positive charge and matter and negative charge and antimatter, the polarity of a proton. So both basic forms of dipole must exist in order to have a complete theory of physics. And I discuss that in much greater detail in my book, The Zero Point Universe. So, we know that these things must be true, that we have to have some sort of particle pair model. And the quantum fluctuations themselves have a continuum of wavelength and frequencies from very large to very small in, in both counts. But they cannot have an infinite or zero wavelength or frequency. 
essentially you can't have a point fluctuation with no wavelength. And you can't have an infinite fluctuation with no frequency. So you are limited by the scale because of that, even if though you have a continuum. And this brings up an interesting problem. Some of my people I follow who study cosmology will say you can't have an infinite universe because you can't have an infinite particle. Well, you can still have an infinite number of smaller non-infinite particles and still have an infinite universe. You just can't have a point universe ever or a point anything ever. I'll do another video on, on that because it relates to there are no real physical singularities, especially not point singularities. Now this still leads a lot of questions as to what is the electric charge, and I've studied that and I've discussed how electric charge actually arises to the ability to polarize. The magnitude comes from the quantum field, not from the particles. So you don't actually need to have a magnitude charge. You don't need to have a magnitude of mass. You don't need to have a magnetic moment because you can have quantum fluctuations moving to produce magnetic effects. But we still have the questions are, how does this polarizer work? How does the matter, any matter relationship work? And how does the positive and negative charge polarization match up with matter and any matter? What's the relationship of that? So there's a lot of basic physics questions that need to be answered to understand at the most fundamental what a quantum fluctuation is. And those are things that I'm looking into, trying to chip away at it. But, but ultimately, we may not ever be able to understand precisely what these quantum fluctuations are at the most basic level. But what we do know is the only cause they need is the previous quantum fluctuations. And based on quantum field theory, they always exist. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and even though it's a quasi-answer in some respects, I hope you in enjoyed what I had to say about it. And I'd love to hear your comments if you have any questions or ideas, and certainly open up, we can open up a dialogue about it. And so, if you'd like to read more about it, like I said, I have my book, The Zero Point Universe, and I talk about problems with the current theory in my book, The 100 Greatest Lies in Physics. And then I discuss some other problems with particles and particle models in particular in my book, Goodbye Quarks, The Unity Theory. And if you buy one of my books, that helps me as a retired independent researcher, so I'd appreciate that. So thanks for watching.